Hi and welcome back to my channel. So this video is about a pull string, a camper, RV, pop-up, it doesn't matter, process is the same. In the first part, the seats that I have may be different than yours, but if you're if the cushions on your seats um, are like reversible, don't have plywood backs, they would be upholstered the same as my mattresses, which is in the second part of this video. So, stay tuned. Uh, no sewing machine needed, believe it or not. Um, and I upholstered the entire camper for about 75, 80 bucks. We spent 100, but we have enough fabric. We bought extra. There's enough fabric probably left for all the curtains. So, probably 75 or less for all the upholstery. Uh, big savings, and you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So, enjoy the video. Okay. So we're starting the upholstery, obviously. Uh, both seats of the dinette are done and the back of the one's done. And on these older Coleman's, they had a plywood back on the seat, which really makes upholstering, it's just simple. Uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer. On the back, over the plywood after the uh, main fabric is on I just used a cheap muslin and stapled it on over the plywood just to cover it and finish it off nice uh, these backs get a metal bracket on them that I have to fabricate a little bit uh, I have all the brackets actually but there's four arms and I only have three of the arms so I have to fabricate an arm for it but um, they they make the back attached to the bottom and it folds up and over and onto the dinette so it it kind of stays in place and it supports your weight when you're leaning back so you're not leaning on the canvas so anyway um, I'll need to do that yet after I upholster but um, I'll I'll let you see one here in process in the process of it and it, it's just couldn't get any simpler worst part of it with this check fabric <laughs> it's got to be on there straight it's easy to see if it's straight but it's easy to see if it's not too okay so I'll be right back in process here Okay, so hopefully that's a good seat for you. So I already have it cut to size width-wise. Um, I gotta cut the length yet. It sounds good. I want to get rid of all this excess. Uh, it just puckers and makes it tough to work with if you have too much on there. So we'll just cut it off about here. Okay, so lining up the front edge of the foam on the uh, on the, the, the plat. Okay, so I had to go clear some memory in the GoPro. <laughs> so as I was saying, it's really a no-brainer uh, with these plywood backs how to put these put this on. Uh, the hardest part of the whole thing with this plaid material is making sure everything's lined up straight. It's easy to see if it's straight and not hard at all to see if it isn't. So I look here at the front, the vertical lines um, start pretty much in the middle. Throw a staple in it. Kind of pull it out towards the end, but not enough. If you stretch it too much, and this fabric that I'm using will stretch, then you start distorting your vertical lines again. So you just want to pull it firm, 
put another staple in. Same thing on this end. And then just fasten it in between those. Now, because this has this pattern, I want to stand it up this way and make sure my lines are vertical here. Pull it tight right in the middle. And again, not too tight. If you go too tight, you round off the edges of your foam. Just firm enough to make sure there's no wrinkles. That looks pretty good. Now, the ends get a little tricky. Uh, what we want to do, it's a little bit like doing a Christmas package, except the Christmas package would be more like this. And I like to keep the, ew, sorry I rocked you. Hopefully you can see this. I like to keep this seam here straight up the corner like that instead of coming across and that makes it a little more difficult to do but I think it makes a much nicer job. I tuck this little corner in like that. See this vertical? That's what I like to see. Okay, same thing on the other end. Okay, now the other end. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this. Uh, that's what I was saying, how if you get too much extra bulk, it just makes your life miserable.
Oh, that's so much better. Here we go. If you're going to have any puckers or excess to get rid of, as long as they're on the back, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we need more bullets. Okay, now we're going to cover the back in the muzzle. I'm going to cut just a little extra here. Because for this, we're going to want to fold the edges, fold the, yeah, the edges under so that it's like a hem. So, again... Folded that under and I start in the middle. Now you don't want to staple clear out at the end because you got to fold this under when you get there too. But out towards the end. the end.
Good morning, everybody. All right, so today we're going to sew the mattress covers for the pop-up camper. And <laughs> I live, we live in a, uh, a little cottage. Um, we were kind of the beginning of the tiny house movement. And uh, we just live in a little cabin in the woods. There's not a lot of room in here, and we don't have a sewing machine. So how in the world am I going to sew mattress covers? So, <clears throat> first of all, I love it when somebody says you can't do that. Um, I always tend to do things the old-fashioned way, I guess. Uh, you know, when I run into a challenge and think, uh, how, how can I do that? Um, first thing I think of is, well, how would they have done that in 1830? They didn't have a sewing machine. So I do things the easy way, the simple way, the old-fashioned way. Maybe it's the hard way. But um, I get it done. So uh, the one big enough flat spot that I have to lay out the, the, the uh, camper mattress is on the bed here in the cottage. And it's going to be a rainy day. They're talking storms anyway. So it's a good day to be inside. Um, and I'm going to have to figure out how to video that. But I'll set up the GoPro and maybe some lights or something. And uh, and hopefully take you along on the trip. It isn't going to be as hard as it sounds. Be back. Okay, so welcome to the workshop for today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is make some room. So the one side of the mattress is going to be this heavy duck canvas, uh, which is the same as the seats on the dinette. And then the other side, uh, we bought some sheets with a cool pattern in it that will be used well, you can use it either way. Uh, they can actually be reversible. You can flip them over with that pattern side up. Or you can leave the pattern down as a bottom and uh, and use this uh, canvas as the, as the sleeping surface. And then it'll have, of course, sheets over that. So, um, we're laid out, ready to go. I'm going to bring the mattress in to, to use as a pattern as I go. Be back. Okay, so as you can see, this fabric was just wide enough, and you know, of course, I knew that when I got it. Uh, the fabric was 60 inches wide, the mattress is 51 inches wide, but the fabric has to come up the side three inches, like so. And that gives me about an inch and a half on each side for the hem, which is fine. But it's a good thing it is as big as it is. Alrighty, so I'll be back and we'll deal with the corners first. Okay, so what's laying on top here will be the top of the other mattress. So I'm going to cut this. Right about here. First of all, I want to say thank you to my mama, God rest her soul, for teaching me a little bit of something about sewing. Um, it has served me well knowing a little something what to do so uh, first thing you need you gotta you're gonna need some thread that at least coordinates or comes close to the color of your fabric uh, you need a good needle which I already threaded and uh, some straight pins and some safety pins and uh, so uh, this is gonna up the side and oh and by the way you're always sewing something 
inside out initially. Then we'll turn. The hardest part's going to be after I get everything sewn and closed in, uh, all but one side. And then you got to get the foam out, turn the the cover right side out, and then get the foam back in. And that's going to be by far the hardest part of this whole thing. But anyway, so this is going to want to come up the side. This is going to want to come up the side, which leaves us this. So we're going to sew this and then cut this excess off. So I'll start out by pinning this where I want it, and, uh, and then we'll sew that. Okay, so hopefully you can see that now. Uh, it's pinned straight up and down on that edge. I think I'm going to try wearing the GoPro so you can see how I stitch as I stitch. Uh, so we're going to start real close to the corner here. Put our thread through. Put it back through the loop end of the of the thread and create a knot. Okay, now what we're going to do now is go about every quarter inch, or maybe three eighths. And go straight up this corner. You know, the hand sewing sounds like a nightmare, but we before we had our little cottage, we lived in a big Victorian house, and we had a sewing machine. And I made boat cushions, um, or well, you know, cushions for the seats of boats, not floatable, but. So anyway, I made cushions. I made a. I restored a Model T, and I did all the upholstery in the Model T, and I used the sewing machine for all that. And I gotta tell you, I'm not so sure it's a lot easier, especially on something big like this. Uh, you know, if you were using a sewing machine, you'd probably go around and pin the whole thing together, and boy, that's a lot of fabric. To try to keep straight and keep your your machine from clogging up and I I, I don't know it, it's just it sounds really good to have a sewing machine to do this but uh, something that's big I don't know maybe it's just me maybe I'm just wasn't that good with a sewing machine but uh, this is just almost easier to me. Okay, so anyway, now that we went up, we're gonna go back down, kind of filling in the holes in between the stitches. I think I'm gonna go back up one more time just because it's a corner and I want this really strong and it's only a four inch 
seam, so it's just not that hard to do that. And it's a, actually, it's only a three inch seam, it's three inch foam. So anyway, and you don't want to go clear up to the edge, clear up to the top, uh, because we're going to be cutting this off and cutting this off, and you don't want to cut where your threads are. So, now we'll just make a couple lock stitches here, tie this off. And that corner probably took me, I don't know, 10 minutes. I'll probably fast forward some of this so you won't be able to see actual elapsed time, but it's not very long and it's not a big deal. And those long sides, they're gonna go pretty fast too. Okay, so, cut your thread. We'll tie a new knot in the end, we'll do the next corner. And all the corners, of course, are going to be the same thing. Uh, and then we'll cut off. This, in fact, I'll just do that right now. Um, I'm going to cut, oh, I'm going to say um, three-eighths of an inch out from my stitches, like so. And that way it won't make a big bulky bump bear on the corner. Looks pretty good. On to the next. And all four corners are going to be the same thing. I'm not going to bore you with all that. But after we get all the, the corners sewn, then we're going to uh, put that, that sheet on top and, and stitch down these long sides and the ends. The, well, the one long side gets left open. That's how, where the foam comes out to flip it. Um, but the three sides will get sewn after the corners are done. I'll be back. One thing I always try to keep in mind when I'm doing these projects, enjoy the process. There's no big hurry. Uh, take breaks, relax, enjoy it. So, I've got the two corners here done. And I'm going to flip it just because it'll be a lot easier to get to those other corners. So if you if you notice, what I've done was safety pin the cover to the foam on three sides here, so that I can flip this around and not have anything move and have to realign everything. So that'll keep it where it is. So we're going to flip it here, and do those other two corners, and then we'll be ready to put the the bottom on it. Yeah, I kept everything nice. Right where I need it. Alright, so I'll be back after these other two corners are done. And we'll show you the putting the top on it. Or the bottom on it. However you want to look at it. Okay, so all four corners are sewn now. And it's time to put the bottom on this is what we got um, I used the flat sheet on the bottom of the sewn to the bottom of the mattress <clears throat> and then the fitted sheet will go over over the whatever's up and uh, you get two pillowcases that match it so uh, and we got these at uh, Ollie's 11.99 a set we really couldn't buy the fabric any cheaper, plus we gained the fitted sheet and the pillowcases, so um, that's what we decided to do, and it'll look good. I'll be back. Okay, so three sides of that are pinned and ready to sew, <clears throat> and remember, we're not sewing the fourth side. I'll show you that when we get to it, but right now, I'm going to thread the needle and... Uh, get ready to go here for three of the sides. Be back. It's 12.59 and I'm going to start this long side. 
we'll just see how long it takes to go down the long side you'll see that it, you know I'm sure some people are thinking my gosh it's gonna take forever to sew that by hand I'll show you about halfway down the longest side it's been 15 minutes exactly so half hour for the long sides and the short sides less so um, you know it's not going to be much over an hour to sew this whole whole mattress it's just not that big a deal be back with more progress so the long sides totally done uh, <clears throat> That was 40, exactly 45 minutes, and I took a break and got something cold to drink. So, probably actually a half hour for that long side, which is just about what I figured. Um, now, one other thing I wanted to show you, um, it's pretty important. Where the sides, the horizontal sides, meet the vertical sides that we sewed first the, those corners it's real important that you fill that in and connect them because if you can see that right there I hope you can right there where the foam is that'll ooze out of there like a fat guy out of a tank top so we need to make sure we connect all this real good Okay, so I didn't turn the camera on here, but I just trimmed off this excess flap about a half inch outside the stitch line. That way it just doesn't uh, pucker right on that corner cause a, a lump in there. So, I'll be back. Okay, so two thirds done. It's been an hour and 15 minutes. But I took a lot of breaks, and uh, I'm going to trim this end off, and then I'm going to take another break. Uh, uh, since I didn't turn the camera on for the other one, I'll do I'll do this. And this just gets rid of all that excess that's outside the stitches that isn't doing anything anyway. And that's it. Break time and I'll be back and finish the other end. Okay, so it's 326. So that took uh, two and a half hours. Um, it's all done. Um, now the hard part, I got to get the foam out of there and flip that right side out and get the foam back in it. 
and I'll come back and show you the end. Okay, so that was about as big of a pain in a patootie as I feared it'd be, but it's done. Um, show you all the way around. Uh, this is the bottom it's intended to be. Um, but it could be reversed and this side used up. It's up to the whoever wants to use it. Um, so we still have this side to address. And it's good to have the master's cover removable so it can be washed. And I really didn't want to pay for a six foot zipper for what they cost, two of them. Um, so on one of the forums, I'm not even sure which one, but I think it might have been in the pop-up princess website. If not, it was probably in the pop-up portal. Um, somebody had uh, recovered their mattresses, and instead of putting a zipper in, they just put safety pins along that edge, and they put the pinned edge against the canvas in the back, where it can never be seen anyway. That sounded pretty good to me. So, uh, it's all done except for pinning that shut, and I'll show you when I do it. Gunther's saying, Who are you talking to, Dad? <laughs> I'll be back. All right, all done. There's where I pinned that edge. That'll be against the canvas canopy of the pop-up at the back of the bed. Nobody will ever see that. It'll serve the purpose. It makes it removable and washable. And it'll work. Uh, I think the corners look pretty good. And it has rained all day long while I did this, and it quit raining just a few minutes ago, which is a good chance to take this out, um, get it in the camper, and get the other foam mattress, because it's still out there. Uh, camper's all closed up, so I'll have to get it. So I'll be back with pictures of it in place. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> uh, I guess it's not bad for an amateur. They'll have to do the other end bed and the little seat by the sink base. Still waiting on the foam to get dry for that little sink base. It should be dry, but I, I haven't checked it today. But yesterday it was a little damp, so I waited to do it. So, on to the next bed mattress. There you go. Thanks for watching the videos. Um, stay tuned for more. There's there's a lot more coming to this this renovation. And uh, Canvas will be coming here in another month. Um, oh, I've got the table legs ordered. It'll be here Friday. i got to put on it. i got a sink faucet ordered that'll be here Monday. So I'll be putting it on. Uh, a lot of little touch-ups and miscellaneous. So check back with me. Please hit thumbs up and subscribe if you like the videos. And... I hope you're enjoying my renovation. I'm out of here. Smart Sound.